Welcome to the Awaken Heart Podcast. I'm your host, Nancy Walters. Get ready to create magic and miracles as you lean into your heart's desires. I believe not only does the heart want what it wants, but it knows. This show is a weekly deep dive into what it means to live from an awakened heart. I'll be sharing inspiring stories and real conversations with people just like you who have turned the ordinary into the extraordinary. My mission is to show you how you too can be connected and heart-centered in every area of your life. Your journey to aligning with more love, more joy, and your wildest dreams come true starts now. Hello, Awakened Hearts, and welcome back to the Awakened Heart Podcast. I'm your host, Nancy Walters, and I'm going to try to get through this intro without coughing. I have a little bit of a cold. I don't know if you can hear it in my voice. Although this was the first episode that I recorded this new year, 2024, I am now recording the intro just before I release it. That's usually how I do it. So yeah, I've got a little bit of a cough and nasal thing because in Michigan, it's sunny, it's gorgeous outside. We had 72 degrees. We went from 72 degrees to 24 degrees yesterday. So that's the thing with Michigan is the temperatures can just jump and drop. And yeah, a lot of people are getting affected by it, including myself. But overall, it's been an incredibly mild winter. So like, I can do this. (laughs) This California girl can do this. I really do love the seasons. Today, we have an extraordinary guest who has transcended the depths of addiction to emerge as she guides her light of inspiration and intuitive wisdom. It is my pleasure, and I'm so thrilled to introduce you to this incredible woman, Ray Leonard. Ray is an author, intuitive guide, and coach with her latest book titled High Sobriety, A Trip Out of the Bottle Into Your Intuition where she draws on several areas of expertise, including Jivmaki yoga, I know I'm saying that wrong, (laughs) probably, vortex healing, conscious language, and master cleansing. Ray guides those ready for post-traumatic growth. Her coaching practice is a unique blend of frequency work, biofeedback, and transformation, where she assists clients in intentionally changing deeply rooted patterns, helping them unearth a carefully calibrated inner compass. Today, Ray shares her journey from addiction to intuitive mastery, discussing the power of words, the art of conscious creatorship, and the prophetic insights found in dreams and senses. But that's not all. Ray also introduces us to an incredible device known as Healy. I've never heard of this before. Tapping into the quantum field to optimize various aspects of life. Like, I am so enthralled with anything that has to do with the quantum energy. And she actually gifted me a session. And uh, yeah, it's this tiny little device. We're being bombarded by all these negative frequencies left and right. And this is something that can really harmonize you in so many different ways. I mean, I keep a blue shield in my house. It helps combat EMF signals. And what it does, it uses scalar energy. So your body's harmonizing to that frequency instead of the damaging frequencies that are coming off, say, your internet or your printer or your computer. I also have something called a harmony pendant I keep on me, which calibrates to my energy and it rests over my breastbone. So it keeps me protected in so many different ways. So that's really cool. It's something you all should look into. And I know she uses a lot of essential oils, which are pretty incredible upon themselves. Like I had a headache really bad headache. I was taking a shamanistic soul retrieval over the weekend and I had a really bad headache. I didn't want to have to take Advil and blow up my gut because every time you take Advil, it blows up your gut biome. So they gave me some essential oils, peppermint for me to put on my temples and on my chest while it was empty and I just kept smelling it. And literally the headache went away. I was able to like heal it just from smelling essential oils. And That is something that is really cool and needs to be looked into more. I know I want to order a whole set and kit. And I know she uses Young Living Oils, which is a very sustainable company where they use only the purest ingredients for their products. So get ready to be captivated by Ray's transformational insights and all these modalities that you can use to up-level your life. 
Her story is not just one of personal triumph, but an invitation to explore the limitless potential within each of us. This is the Awakened Heart Podcast, and I'm your host, Nancy Walters. I really enjoyed this conversation. I'm sure you will too, and I got so many ahas out of it. And this is why I do the Awakened Heart Podcast, to bring women like Ray to you. So you can maybe see maybe a little bit of yourself inside someone else and show what is possible. Maybe you could find her and work with her and maybe get her book and uplevel your life and awaken your own heart. So let's dive into the radiant world of Ray Leonard and discover the transformative power of intuition, language, and technology. Hey, Ray, welcome to the Awaken Heart Podcast. Oh, thank you so much, Nancy. It is such a pleasure to be here and meet you and talk with you today. Thank so you. Yes. And as we're recording this, this is our my first podcast recording of the year. So happy new year to you. Oh, thank you. Congratulations. First podcast of the year. Thank you. 2024. I mean, this is obviously airing a little later, but I just wanted to say that we have a new year in front of us. Although I have learned, I don't know if you knew this, that the new year actually isn't in January. It's actually like March, April. Did you hear that? <laughs> yes. I, they keep messing yes, with our really. calendars and messing with everything, all our holidays, like Christmas. Christ wasn't even born until like March or something like that. Or or the, the wise men didn't even arrive till like January. My mom used to always put the manger out. Manger? Is that what it's called? A manger? A manger, I'm it wrong. Yeah. a manger. Okay. Away in a manger. Okay. So um, she used to always put like the manger scene out with Christ and the, you know, the baby and, you know, the um, baby J. Yes. And then she'd put the um, wise men like down the counter further because they didn't arrive in January or something. So they'd start moving closer and closer. So she always wow. had the wise men further down the counter. Like, oh, okay. We learned that at an early age anyway. I love that. Anyway, she was following her intuition. That's yes. so cool. Yes. So, I mean, that always speaks into a lot of what you have developed and learned over the, your last several years after going through a traumatic experience and overcoming addiction and uh, really coming into your path of, you know, really your soul's work and what you're here to do. I mean, you've been an author and now you intuitive guide and a coach. It just talks into how our calendar really isn't accurate and how our holidays are actually based off of old pagan holidays, like, you know, the winter solstice, the spring solstice, the, the summer solstice, whatever. It's energy, vibration, and frequency. I know you work with a lot of fascinating modalities that work with the quantum physics and vibration. And I'm just, I'm quantum energy is just so amazing to me in this yoga that I've never heard about. But uh, with saying that, I would love for my audience to hear more about your background and, you know, the struggles that you overcame before coming into who you are now. Mm, sure. A little bit of history. Yes. The history of Ray. Uh, well, I uh, was born in New York, uh, in the city, and um, in the 60s, and uh, my parents split when I was very young, and I kind of grew up uh, a complicated childhood, uh, spending my time, I'm, I'm a hybrid between the Hudson Valley in New York and the East Village in Manhattan. So I had many varied experiences. Um, you know, I wasn't one of these protected children. Um, so I had, I relied on my intuition and uh, Claire senses, uh, which are just another word for your psychic powers. Mm -hmm. uh, did you know that they were psychic powers? So did you have that opening and that, that gift early on and really not quite understand it? Or did you already know that you had something special? I knew I had something special. Mm -hmm. I knew that I could smell people. Mm -hmm. uh, that's one of my um, dominant Claire's uh, is Clara Lince. I knew that I 
who I could trust very young, who I couldn't trust. Um, so I was a survivor very early. And that kind of got shut down when I was about 12. And I started drinking and smoking pot with my friends and killing pain, as well as at school, you know, nobody wants to know or hear, you know, what you, what you know, because they're, they're listening to the authorities that be because that's who knows not you. Um, so I learned in a lot of social situations to be quiet. Mm -hmm. Uh, so then moving forward, I, I didn't really know what I wanted to do. Um, I kind of fell into performing and acting because I thought, well, I'm kind of talented and it was kind of in my family. And so I took that road for a while. Um, I was on the performance, the art performance scene, uh, performance artist scene in downtown. I was super cool, edgy, and I did a lot of, I did a lot of drugs and drank a lot of alcohol and mm -hmm. blacked out. Uh, and I really always thought, oh, I'm not an addict because I uh, don't, I don't do it every day. I can handle my hangovers. And so, I, and I kind of grew out of it in a way when I moved upstate, I got married, started a family. And then I was just binging uh, maybe once a month, getting really, really messed up. I always had my stash of drugs that I relied on. And at the same time, I became a yoga teacher and I was on a health path. I actually really love health food and all things related to health. Yet I was still depending on my nightly wine and I mm -hmm. kind of developed a pernicious wine habit uh, in my forties. So I got it together. I quit and I did it kind of on the sly a little bit. I, I didn't say one day, you know, I noticed I was like, I'm drinking wine earlier and earlier. Um, I'm doing, I'm smoking more and more pot, you know, all of a sudden it started to bite me in the, in the bum. Um, whereas like my whole life, I kind of had it in under control. My marriage fell apart. You know, I just, I just wasn't, I was in a slow slide. Mm -hmm. And you saw that, that, you saw that, recognized it. I saw that. And I think I saw that because I did have a lot of skills. It didn't happen to me when I was 12 and you don't have a lot of skills. You become an addict, you know, you're really screwed, right? You're going down fast then. I always had a parallel uh, life going on as a health nut um, and spiritual person. So I think I did, I could see that. Yes. Mm -hmm. I was like, this is not, this is not going mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. So I kind of snuck up on quitting. I felt that if I had just pulled the rug out and said, I quit that I would have failed and I would have relapsed. And I could actually feel the negative entities with their claws in me, so mm -hmm. to speak. Mm -hmm. And uh, I knew they were hanging around. I knew they were living off my, my energy, the negative energy. So I was like, I have to psych these guys out somehow. So I'm going to continue to drink. I'm going to start amping up on my yoga practice. Mm -hmm. I'm going to continue to drink. I'm going to keep doing ecstasy, keep doing lines of ecstasy in my bathroom. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to continue to drink and I'm going to start listening to sober podcasts, mm -hmm. list 10 reasons why mm -hmm. I drink. <laughs> so when I was ready, I just kind of let it go. I said, mm -hmm. that's it. I'm done. Mm -hmm. It happened like that. It wasn't like, I'm going to stop it. This is horrible. You, and, you know, I was just able to let oh. it go. And that's the reason that I really wanted to write a book. And I really wanted to help more people uh, as a coach and an intuitive, because I feel that that is a path that I made and that other people can benefit from it if they would like to, as opposed to, uh, you know, I hit rock, rock bottom and went, to, went into recovery and went to rehab or went to AA because I didn't do those things. Mm -hmm. and of course, those are incredible tools for people who need them. It wasn't my road. And I wanted to share my experience to help mm -hmm. more people. 
yeah, perhaps they can, with help from your set, your guidance and your coaching and this new book, High Sobriety, which just came out in October, a trip out of the bottle into your intuition. So that's essentially what you did. You didn't have to hit rock bottom, even though that's a great catalyst for so many people. They 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 have to in order to open up their eyes. But it sounds like, you know, somebody that can is going in that direction might be able to take the same steps that you did to just let it go. Right. And that was you start. It's funny because you're talking about how, oh, I'm in the health field, I'm doing my yoga, and I can still do all this, but I'm still doing my yoga and I'm listening to my like my my meditations and myself up, I can still do this. And you're like, wait a minute, this is not <laughs> one yeah. covering up the other. Yeah. So you weren't really in, um, what is it? Like maybe you were teaching yoga or were you teaching yoga too at that yes. time? Or, yeah. It's funny because so many people look towards, I, I've known some yoga teachers before where they're like saying one thing, but then behind the scenes, they're completely doing another thing. So you're seeing that you're not in integrity with probably what you're teaching and what you're doing and what you're claiming to be. And so you decided just to let it go to be in alignment. That's pretty amazing that you were able to do that without having to go to the 12 step or whatever. Oh, so many yeah. Days. Well, thank you. It mm-hmm. was, um, you know, I, I leaned in the wrong direction for a while. I remember one night uh, I was with my husband and we were on a back deck uh, at in a restaurant and I had a cocktail in one hand and somebody passed me a spliff in the other. And I look up and there's one of my yoga students, like a young girl, like looking at me like, are you like just so, so disappointed, mm-hmm. you know? And I thought, I can't do this anymore. <sighs> So I quit teaching yoga. Mm. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my you know. God, that's funny. Yeah. I was like, I'm going to revive my acting career and I'm going to, you know, uh, pick a uh, avatar that's, you know, a, a crack headed, um, wild, abusing wreck of a person. And I played a lot of roles like that mm. to kind of fit into my downslide. Mm -hmm. Um, And that was kind of my, my rock bottom, or as I like to say, rock bottom is when you quit digging, Mm -hmm. which was the title of a story I wrote for another book uh, called Second Chances, which is really cool stories of people. Oh, I can see that on your website, Second Chances. And so you became, um, I mean, you just fell into that role because it it was like a lot of people, you know, dig from their own personal experience in order to become this this character in films and television or or theater. And I did note when I was list- what, reading one of your story. Oh, here it is. Military. Because I used to work in. I lived in Los Angeles. I used to work on in the entertainment industry for a long time as well. I've been on many, 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 many film sets. Like many film sets. I mean, in the lower ex- echelon of it. But I was on many, many, many film commercial sets and all that all over the city. But you, you had, it. yeah, I do. But you had some militaristic film sets. I'm curious, what do you mean by that? Well, coming from a very feminine place where I feel that I do uh, when I would get a role in a film and then, okay, great. Then the film is shooting and you get to the set and you're like hurried off into, you know, the creative spots only. And, uh, you know, you're kind of on lockdown, you know, mm-hmm. someone's mm-hmm. like your guard, you know, you're, they guard you all day, the PA and you don't mix with other mm-hmm. people. They have to know exactly where you are at every second because every second is money and that it's a very male, the whole structure of a film shoot is just, is very male. Mm-hmm. And I found that what I really wanted to do was hang out with everybody Mm -hmm. and help them with their problems. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I wanted to help them. I wanted to talk to them. I wanted to help them fix things. I wanted to give them little energetic adjustments. Mm -hmm. And, you know, but I was, I was over here and, um, you know, a very different experience than theater. Theater is more, more feminine. Mm -hmm. And that's what I mean by militaristic. It's Mm -hmm. run like a, uh, a troop, mm-hmm. a um, even with the command who's in command, mm-hmm. you know, first 80, second 80, PA, 
Right. And you can't, you can't talk up and you're not supposed to talk down. Mm, it's so just, dumb. It's so dumb. And I've seen so many times where, I mean, really huge celebrities and they have their entourage. It's just annoying, but it's like, I find that the crew is some of the best, you know, I work with them over and over and again, some of the best people. And, um, you know, there's some huge celebrities as well. Like George Clooney is one that's really awesome because he doesn't care. He doesn't like, he was nominated for Serrania when he was like, we were filming a coffee commercial, like Nespresso. He was the spokesperson for that. Just so nice. Like he had just been nominated for a film. He didn't have any entourage when it came to lunch. Like He had his own tray, was in line, sat down with the camera crew, invited them all to a barbecues. And he talked with anybody, he talked with the extras. He was just so wonderful and everyone loved him. And it's just maybe in that that regards, a lot of actors get a bad rap because they won't interact with anyone else because like you, you were relegated to your own little box and not allowed to interact with, with everybody else. But yeah, I mean. Well, once you're, once you're big money and you're, you're the name that's making this all happen, like George Clooney, you know, mm-hmm. you're, you're yeah. running the show, yeah, really. That's true. You know? that's true. That's true. You're the name. So then you can do whatever you yeah. want. Yeah. So if you're like a guest star or if you're like featured or, you know, not the star of the show. It's like, okay, you're over here. Don't talk to these people. Stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I I didn't, um, I didn't really love it. Yeah. And nowadays I'm glad I've been out for so long after, you know, what we've experienced the last couple of years and what I've heard some of my friends have to do on set in order even to work on set is like, (laughs) I would not go through all those things that they've had to go through. It's absolutely insane, insane, insane. And it still is. So, no, um, so that's no cool way. that you had that experience. Yeah. Before all that happened, like, hmm. <laughs> uh, so yeah. So we both have that in common. I'm looking over your, maybe it's your right shoulder. Cause you're flipped around you, that, that mixer that you have back there. I ordered one. That was a Christmas gift to myself. Yes. Oh, fantastic. Nancy. Is it yes. a KitchenAid? It's a KitchenAid. I spent on it. I was one day, like I usually don't flip around online. I was like, I ordered stuff from Amazon and ordered that one from Walmart because it was on sale for like, I got it for like $2.59 and those things are like $300, $400 something dollars. Yeah. So I can't wait to make my next bread because I, as I mentioned, I just moved back to Michigan after like being on the West Coast for 25 years, LA, Portland, and it's going to be winter. So I'm going to start making breads and start controlling some of the things like next one is cranberry walnut bread, but I'm going to see how much easier that is. So like, oh, you know, some of these recipes are like, oh, put it in your stand mixer. And I'm like, I don't have one of those or cut the flour or cut the butter and all that stuff. So yeah, my next projects oh. anyway, your dream kitchen there. That's so it. cool. You're, um, you're, you're in Michigan, you know, nesting yeah. and yeah. making bread. Yeah, back with family. And your your dream kitchen looks like something I would see in like Spain or Greece. Maybe oh. Greece or oh, Italy. I yeah, Greece. That. The colors are Greece. Yes. It's this is one of my dream kitchens. I have a bunch of them. I changed them out. Yeah. This is in Arizona. I think it's oh, like Memphis, Okay. Ohio. Yeah. It looks like a, like what are those Pueblos they're called or something like yes. that? Yes. Yeah. No, it's very hey, nice. Adobe. Anywhere, anywhere warm. Yeah. Right. Yep. See, anywhere warm is my dream kitchen. <laughs> yes, that's my goal. I like having both. I don't even mind the winter. It's not even that bad here. I mean, I lived in California for two over two decades. So, and I was just out there visiting. It's kind of nice to have the seasons, but it's able to, to have that kind of lifestyle where, like, okay, I'm too cold. Let me go visit my friends in warm places or like let me go to the tropics or whatever. So, I think that's a, a good plan for you. Yeah, that's a good plan. And everybody get a little warmth in the bones. So, so, okay. So back to our topic, we digressed. I talked about how it's just like two women having a conversation here. I so love that. I'm I did want to ask too, back to when you were a child, that you, your clairsentience was smell. And let me get green my thoughts. The smell. So you were able to sense who was good, who was bad. So how does that work exactly? So you're able to smell things. So at an early age, you discovered that people that you should be close to and that you wait, how does that actually, what does that actually look like? Or what does it actually smell or feel like to you? So I had an uncle, relative Mm -hmm. of mine, and I couldn't stand his cologne. I couldn't be Mm, anywhere near it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I couldn't be anywhere near him. I didn't like his food that he made. 
I didn't like the smell of it. I didn't like the taste of it. Uh, I didn't, I didn't want to be, it kept me at a huge distance because I didn't want to smell his, mm -hmm. any his smells, mm -hmm. uh, his aroma. And then I later found out in my life that he had abused my cousin. Mm. So that's an example mm -hmm. of how it worked for me. Uh, I find that I, I, I smell things and I said, do you smell that? Anybody mm -hmm. smell this weird smell? And people are like, no, I don't smell anything. Um, I think it's one of the senses that get, that gets clogged up really easily. People mm -hmm. with colds and uh, don't do good breathing exercises, right? They're not practicing pranayama. They're not doing yoga. So um, this is, you know, yet it is our strongest sense. Mm -hmm. There's very, very short distance from your nostrils to your olfactory bulb to the limbic region of your brain, which is where your emotions lie. Mm -hmm. So when you use your sense of smell more, the, okay, I know what this brings me to. When I quit abusing myself with booze and alcohol, Young Living Essential Oils were at my doorstep in a few days. And, you know, when you shut one door, another one opens. Mm -hmm. That's what happened. And these oils, I knew I touched the box. I didn't even open them. A friend of mine, I'll back up a little bit. A friend of mine a few weeks before had called me and said, you got to get these oils. You got to get these oils. You got to get these oils. And I know my friend. I was like, okay, whatever. Just send it to me because I know you're not going to take no for an answer. And I had only smelled essential oils like at the health food store and, you know, they have them like everywhere now. And I was just like, no, that's not it. These oils are very special. And when I got them, I had the emotional support that I needed that I had been turning to booze and alcohol for. And these are connected to our sense of smell, mm -hmm. aroma. And it's certainly not in our society uh played up right it's played down mm -hmm. put a mask on it <laughs> you know the chemicals all over the house oh, chemicals yeah. all over the kitchens mm -hmm. chem you know just just mask everything with chemicals instead of um spending time in nature and smelling the trees mm -hmm. and smelling the animals and smelling the air there's so much it's a very very strong powerful sense. Mm. You know what? That's so interesting because I never thought about that over the last couple of years and how they're still trying to institute it. And I heard Los Angeles did it as well, how they covered our faces with those paper things. So they covered our senses. They, I didn't even think about that, but it brought an aha because like really they are dehumanizing us. They are cutting us off from interacting with each other and seeing facial expressions and all that, but it cut us off from our smell as well, because then we're not bringing in, you know, scents and smells from everywhere else and like going into our intuition and our intuitive senses that, that they're cutting off our smell as well. And, yeah. and I know I have, I've always had a hyper sense of smell, hyper sense of smell. And I never thought about it as being a superpower, like it is for you as well. Like it can send me in so many different, I'm going to pay attention to that more. But it Yay! literally can send me like a smell of campfire smoke and I'm brought back somewhere. It's just so much pleasure in smell all the time. So, and, and everyone that listening is now like really pay attention to that as well. And I love that. It's like, it protected you. I hate, like I can walk down an aisle sometimes and I just smell that overwhelming cologne smell. And it's like, I don't know, maybe they're trying to cover something up by doing something, you know, so strong and cologne and I've had to tell men that I've dated before, look, like, I appreciate that you're putting that on for me, but it's really, I've got a hypersensitive sense of smell and it's really overwhelming. I like the smell of your skin or gentle oil or something. I'm like, I'm sorry, but I can't be around you if you, I'm trying to say it gently so I don't emasculate them or and such, but, but to, you know, maybe they are masking something just like you found from your uncle that you didn't that you were right intuitively, didn't realize you were right about until later on. It's like, okay, all the boxes click and all that. And use that a lot when you first became sober as well as your clear sense. 
it, and it, you said it popped up quickly in sobriety. And so how did that work within? Well, your when I s- stopped drinking, I also, then all of a sudden I started dreaming more, you know, I was just putting, I was just anesthetizing myself and putting myself out uh, with drugs. And then wow, I'm dreaming. And then I started getting really into my dreams and I started waking myself up and writing them down, realizing that spirit is communicating to me through my dreams. And when I was writing them out, I realized, wow, I could smell that rose in my dream. Mm. That's a sign from my spirit guides or passed on loved ones who come to me all the time in dreams. And I realized these are clues, you know, when I see something and an orange, orange ball in my dream and it stands out. Okay. That's a clue from spirit. And the more that I did that, the more I was able to prophesize with my dreams and I looked into this and found that uh, Native Americans, that they would bring their children together in the morning and listen to their dreams, Mm -hmm. listen to the children's dreams. And because they knew that they were prophecies and they would get guidance on their crops or when they were moving or, yeah, they knew that that dreams, there's prophecies in dreams. And to use that example again of the ball. So, I had a dream. I saw a friend of mine and she came over to my house with an orange ball under her arm. And, and then, you know, the rest of the dream went on and I, when I wrote it down, okay, but she had this orange ball. I knew that was a clue. And that day she came over to the house and she was, I saw her park and then she was blocked by a tree. I couldn't see what she was doing. And then I'll, and then she appeared from the tree and she had an orange ball mm-hmm. under her arm that obviously she had picked up off the ground and she brought it over to the neighbors, to the neighbor's kids. Wow. <laughs> and I thought, that's a prophecy. That is information that came to me in a dream and then it manifested mm-hmm. in, in the reality. It's, it's a simple, silly mm-hmm. thing, but the more that I acknowledge that, the mm-hmm. more that will happen and I can trust myself that wow, be careful in this situation when I dream about it. And then I see myself in that situation, whatever it is, be careful because maybe it was an accident, cancel, cancel, delete, Mm -hmm. delete on that. But there is this information available to you. And when I completely quit polluting myself, it, it's all came flooding at Mm. me. Yeah. And once you begin to trust it, more comes to you. Yeah. And then you, the oils, came to you and you just ordered them. And I did look up the the products online and how they're harvested and how they're made. And it sounds like it's a small company and they really are really integrity with the land and the plants. And it sounds like a wonderful product. And you had one I saw on your Instagram that you were having some drops of abundance. And what was the other one? Abundance and something else oh. you were putting in your cup. Co- I don't know how long ago that was, a couple of years ago, maybe. And you were putting gratitude. it in your gratitude. gratitude, gratitude and abundance, and you're putting it into your drink every. Oh, did you experience in a anything? Diffuser. In a diffuser. Oh, in a diffuser. Mm, yeah, I got some oils like that too, actually, recently. Yeah, for the smell. Yeah, Young Living oils. You can you can mm-hmm. put them. Okay. And consume them. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't any other brand. I would not do that with. But Young Living oils are very very pure. Yeah. Um. And it isn't a small company. It's a huge mm, okay. billion dollar company. It started out as a mom and pop shop. Mm-hmm. That's what but I was reading. Mm-hmm. We need we need good big companies. And mm-hmm. that is what we have with Young Living. So that's positive. It's positive mm-hmm. that we're big. They do incredible charities mm-hmm. and are such a generous company and care about the earth and the animals and the the employees. I mean, when you go to a young living farm, it's so well run from top to bottom and bottom to top with the holistic approach. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I have 
I have other companies that I use their products, but I can't say that mm -hmm. things are so well run and employees are so well treated and animals are so well treated. And mm -hmm. um, that's, it's a very, very holistic, beautiful company. Mm, that's wonderful. I'm going to have to put that in the notes. So, so the listeners can go and find those products and support businesses like, like theirs as well, because a lot of us are going yeah. to that. We need Just to get in touch with me. Oh I'll yes, definitely. Up. She'll hook you up. <laughs> <laughs> That's even better. They don't have to search a one-stop shop, right? Work with you and, and get, go get those luscious oils. So you mentioned that you were all cosmic creators and we really are because we're all ener energetic beings, but it's such a, you know, we see it in our, a lot of us, our day-to-day -day lives and nothing changes. It's the new year, nothing changes. Um, but we all have the ability to create through our thoughts and really it's through our feeling and vibrations and we're responsible for what happens in our life. Like I always mention, I've been single for 10 years. Like what the hell, what is in me that's consciously creating this? I'd like to change that for 2024, even though I'm, you know, happy and I've got my little 20 year old cat and everything. But, um, so sometimes when we hear that, that we're all conscious creators and we're all creating our own lives and we don't like seeing what's in our lives, how would we use that creatorship to create our own lives or to change what we see that we don't actually want in our lives? And maybe we want that kitchen that you have. And like, how do we bring that to us? Well, I start with my words. Yeah. Yeah. Words are magic wands mm -hmm. and all day long, we're creating our lives with our words, which are connected to our emotions. So you can come at it either way when you realize, oh, I'm not something I don't, I feel badly. Um, you can say, all right, well, I'm going to say some, something positive. Or if you hear something coming out of your mouth that you realize that's coming from my ancestors or my parents, you know, that's not, that's not really what I want to be saying when you have that awareness. And that's happened to me a lot in the past five years that I have an extra special awareness of what is coming out of my mouth. And a lot of things were like, oh, oh, shoot, just even like, oh, shoot, like, no, I don't want to say, oh, shoot. I don't want to really? say something violent that has to do with a gun. Oh, God, I didn't even think of that. It sounds like it, so you're not saying S-H-I-T, so you're saying, oh, shoot. Okay, that's really right. Right. Shoot is, is, I don't want to shoot anything. Right. So I switched that to sugar. Oh, sugar. <laughs> and it just makes me so much happier, you know. Mm -hmm. but, oh, snap. <laughs> oh, well, snap. you can snap exactly. your spines only. Snap a pea, Ooh. snap a spine. Okay, which brings me to my biggest one, Nancy, you mm -hmm. reminded me, I feel like this is rampant in our society. And I feel that I want to have a campaign against this saying, I was blown away. Mm. Cancel, cancel, delete, delete. We do not want to be blown away. Mm -hmm. We don't want our minds blown. This is coming from somewhere not positive. So whatever you can do when you catch yourself, saying that, that saying, change it into something. Wow. My heart is so expanded. My mind is so expanded. Mm -hmm. I feel completely sparkly and amazing at this time because of what you just said, you know, anything, but I just really don't think that's a positive one. So what the words that you speak. So a lot of people I am is super, super powerful. When you say I am, that comes from, I am that I am. Mm -hmm. It is source being, you are stepping in. When you say I am, the universe reverberates. She is, she is in the beingness of that thing. It's not coming later. It's not, I'm, I'm try. I am trying. No, I am this. So instead of, I am trying to do this, I am doing this. Mm -hmm. I am wanting, when you say I am wanting, mm -hmm. the universe is reverberating. She's wanting. <laughs> she doesn't have, yeah. Mm -hmm. She doesn't have, exactly. I am having more of this in my life. What's the other hope. one? Hope. You don't believe you have it. You can have I it. Hope am, is a beggar. Oh, that's really good. Mm -hmm. I am hope. 
I am giving with ease and abundance. I am the unlimited source of all. I am an easy, open conduit for you, divine beloved. I am trustful. I am worthy. Transfer out all the things that when you catch yourself saying, I am sad, cancel, cancel. I am mad. What are the other ones that people I am say? Sick. I don't feel well. I am, yeah, don't like, I am healing. I am sick. I, oh, mm -hmm. I used to say this one. I am sick and tired <laughs> of this or that, or exactly. These are very, very simple things you can do and to raise your vibration mm -hmm. every single day is to really, really watch your words because they are your magic wands and they are the first connection as a cosmic conscious creator to all the things that you want because just just even saying them you just come into such a more positive place i am worthy mm -hmm. you know you can say you can say feeling i have a sad feeling right now you know you don't have to ignore your emotions i have a sad feeling right now oh I'm so sorry oh Oh, not I am so sorry. Oh, hmm. wow. Okay. Sit with that. I have a sad feeling. That is different than saying I am sad. Mm -hmm. I'm feeling sad because emotions are like transitory. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. It's not who oh. you are. It's not, you're not a sad being. Emotions, let it, let it flow through you. That's what I do with my clients. You know, most of the time on the first session, I just take the conversation and I transpose it into positive things. I say, just don't edit yourself, just whatever, tell, tell me, tell me how it is. And then I go through and I help them turn their words into something that's going to work for them. Mm -hmm. uh, I put it in the, the Healy frequency device and get it. Yes, running let's through. talk about that Healy frequency yeah. device. I've never heard of one before now. And I looked it up just before we got on this call. I was like, oh, there's so much more I want to learn about it. And I saw that there's different packages or something that you can use it for, but it's just fascinating, you know, how you can attune it for animals and plants. And like, can you please share and enlighten our audience what a healing device is and how it's used? So a Healy frequency device is a way to tap in to the quantum field, the information field, which is in the space below. Okay, so we're, we're bodies, our skin, our organs, our tissues below that, our cells below that, our atoms below that, our subatomic particles below that. If you take a microscope and you look at the subatomic particles, they're 99.999% space. Mm -hmm. That's where the quantum field is, right? We're just, uh, we're, we're fluid. We're not solid beings and energy and frequency can move easily on this plane. So there's all this information there. So what the Healy device does is it has a quantum sensor in it. There's, there's lots of different frequency devices out there. And a lot of them are incredibly cool and do amazing things. Like there are practitioners who have figured out how to, what frequency is, is good for your liver, what frequency is good for your emotions, what frequency is good for the big C word. And, but it's a, it's a frequency that they figured out and they apply it to you. What the he what makes the Healy different is that there's a quantum sensor in it. Um, the man who developed it was a monk for a long time. He was on a spiritual quest as well as being a physicist. So he married these two worlds of science and spirituality. That was his goal. It's really, really, really cool. So there's a quantum sensor in there, and the quantum sensor reads the individual's frequency in your most exalted state, in your most positive state, it sees the perfect you, mm. happiest you, and it will deliver frequencies every 10 seconds to what, how your frequency is changing. 
And that's, so if 10 people in the room have a stomach ache and you put a Healy on them, it will be delivering different frequencies to every mm -hmm. single person. That's so interesting. And then there's a whole subconscious component, which is what I use the most in the mm -hmm. it's called the coaching app. And that is the epigenetic component of mm -hmm. the Healy. So it addresses your subconscious triggers and it goes in and, and takes them out. So you're actually changing your DNA so you can get to problems before they become problems. It's really, really, really cool. And it's here. It's here for us now. It's That's fascinating. Is it kind of like scalar energy? Because I have a device in my home that I use, Blue Shield, that I use to combat those EMFs. And I always wear this. It's a harmony pendant that is supposed to oh, you wear it on your sternum and it protects from, it harmonizes all the frequencies that are around. Is it kind of like that scalar energy is from the moon and the stars and cosmic energy and it just gives a harmonizing frequency so you're not bombarded with all this. Oh, yes. look at how little it is. It's little. It's oh, little. This is the device. So cool. And this is the scalar wave component to it. So this is sending frequencies mm -hmm. resonantly. It also works on microcurrent. So you can hook up electrically because we're electromagnetic mm -hmm. beings. So you put the wristbands on mm. and you charging your cells literally the battery of your cell mm -hmm. because it needs charging. It's just going, the older we get, it's just, you know, our cells are yeah. just going no, 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 losing voltage. So you can work through the microcurrent, which delivers a low dose of an electrical current right to your cells. Love that way. Do it three or four times a week. Uh, but the, and the scalar wave component the resonant component you can i have this in my pocket 24 hours a day wow running different programs um i'm running coherence on us right now on another healing i have a bunch of healings oh my God, i love that so we're having the best most incredible conversation benefiting the most people Aww. amplifying it oh my god and that's incredible. Through the, through the scalar waves. Exactly. Scalar waves are so cool. They're, they're mm -hmm. fast. They move faster than the speed of light. Mm -hmm. And they're free, Yay. free energy. They're the yeah. free energy. Yeah. It's available to all of us. And the thing is, is something like this should be available to everybody and all free, but we understand how what's happening to our medical system and what's how it's been hijacked by what's been going on the last hundred years, where a lot of our like natural healing modalities have been kind of erased. And there's people like yourself and myself and many others that are seeking these kind of devices and these healings. And it's just fascinating. I've been so fascinated with how just even foods can heal our bodies. Like, oh my gosh, like I'm so wrapped up in natural like remedies, like for a cough, like an onion, pour a little like sugar on it. And it creates this syrup that you take for your, for your ailments and such. But yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah, we don't so you, need their junk. No, no, and uh, you know we're seeing it harder and harder for small farmers and such to, you know, organic milk or like unpasteurized whatever, and like you know keeping like the mRNA out of our cattle and our plants and stuff. But you know, more and more people are going to be seeking out their own ways to heal, and something like this, like like this this device. It's going to help so many people thrive. Like, so what have you noticed with people? I know you use something, you're sort of certified in vortex healing as well. I know you with vortex yes. healing and this other yoga that I've never heard of a conscious language too. I was trying to look that up just before. Is that kind of like light language or start? Conscious what is it called? Language is yeah. what I was talking about. Your words are words. Oh, that's it. Okay. Conscious. Okay. Got it. I don't know if it's like, I love it. Is it it's, um, it's a modality developed by Robert Tennyson. He just passed mm -hmm. and it's fantastic. It's becoming more aware of mm -hmm. your, of your words yeah, and your lips catching it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm going to practice at the beginning of the new year, beginning, well, the beginning of Western new year. <laughs> exactly. I'm going to start practicing that. But have Not you ever really. heard of light language? I'm so, when I hear a certain light language, I think it's, maybe it's the Lumerian light language. It's just so beautiful. Have you heard light language? There's some, there's different, that sounds like gibberish, but then there's some that sounds just like 
it literally goes into my whole body. And I'm just so, I'd like to learn that at some point. It's, it's what, you know, our ancestors from the stars or other like Lumeria, or there's another one from um, like the, is it the Atlantean. Spoken? Mm-hmm. Is it spoken? It's spoken. Yeah, you just, some people just open up and they just, they don't know what they're saying and it just comes through them and then they decipher it. But some of it is just so beautiful. It sounds like, it sounds like home. Wonderful. So Ooh, what, I have to look that up. Yeah, you know what? I'm gonna send you someone so you can listen to light language. But then oh, sometimes please. there's some stuff on YouTube and stuff, and I don't know. You gotta be aware because you don't know what subliminal messages are coming across with a lot of these as well. And I know there's this new movie out, the Obama, the Obamas produced it for whatever reason, but then someone analyzed it and supposedly there's a whole other track that they never see. Like when you edit a track together for like take a track of a sound, there's a soundtrack, and then there's a video track where there there were three other tracks that were with this one that he's analyzed over a thousand something videos and he's never seen this before. So sometimes there's these things that are in there that is a tonality that's, you know, just like what's coming through the TV. So you have to be careful and like really, I think trust. I'm going to send you someone that I really trust who who's speaking this language. Yes. I'm, that's where intuition. What comes I in. like to do is stock up on all the positive things, you know, do as much as you can. And, and then, then you'll be able to trust your own instincts. Yeah, discern. More. Mm-hmm. You'll be strong. Yeah. You'll be strong enough. Um, yeah. Yeah. I don't do any of those, any big movies. I don't go to those mm-hmm. theaters, you know, cineplexes, the mm-hmm. words right in there. Sin. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And- I never thought of that. <laughs> Yeah. And you've got to like, and then they're hypnotizing you. I mean, mm-hmm. I was you programming. Know, mm-hmm. while. Yeah, exactly. The dark room with the, with the light. Think about the, the interrogators, yeah. you know, what they use. It's the same as a film. Gotta well, be- yeah, we're learning a lot about the programming in the film and what's, <laughs> what's underlining everything that's made. It's crazy, but you start to learn what doesn't make you feel good. I, I remember I started watching Squid Games. And I, I started watching it after the first episode. I'm like, I can't watch this anymore because it's literally, I don't know if you know anything about it, but it's J- Japanese, I think. And it's a game, but it just showed the elites. And then like they're playing a game where people were killing each other. I couldn't finish watching that. There was another one where it was called, oh, I don't remember. I used to like watching those because they're fun, but there was one that, oh God, it was on Showtime, but it, it was literally like, I think it was cannibalism. And I had to stop watching after three episodes. I'm like, I can't watch this anymore. There's something like, especially Squid Game, I'm like there's something that's off about this. And I'm not able to watch a lot of those anymore. I used to be able to watch like horror films for fun. And I'm like, I yeah. can't watch that. I don't want that in my consciousness right now. I was in them. I was in horror movies, you know, I, and I don't, participate in any of that anymore. Mm-hmm. I mean, I am like reborn. Mm. Um, there yeah. was there was a podcast I was listening to it. I think it was which is bitch which is bitch. It's it's but she had been on a film set during oh what is it called? It well anyway, there was literally like which she, she went and reached she felt something off. She almost took a role and it list is Decidious or I can't think of it right now. I'll think of it later. But she was about to take this role. She really wanted this role. And then something odd happened in there. And she, you know, she was intuitive and she opened up to it. And there was something weird that happened. And she's like, I can't take this role. And they're like, what? You can't take this role. And then she went back to like, look at what happened like years later. And it verified that there were hauntings on it, like via familia. Like there was literally like stuff that happened, like to people's crew member or cast members, like a house burned down in it. And, you know, they experienced these hauntings during it and after it. And she's like, Ooh, I was right about that. <laughs> she knew. Yeah. She knew. She knew. That's, that's what it's all about. Yeah becoming stronger and so that we can use our discernment that's and that's and it's fun and it's healthy and it feels good and it it's good for us so that's how we can take the negative in this world that's coming at us and use it because that's their biggest fear is that we're gonna figure out our own power and be strong yeah 
And that's another reason that we have been so assaulted over all these years because there is this great awakening. People are waking up to it. And like I opened my eyes for like, I was like, what the hell is going on in this world? Like, oh, and then dark rabbit hold and then like dark night of the soul. But now I like can see things. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, I see the symbolism. I see what's happening. And I see the, the agendas and I see all the like the strife and the division and all that. But there's, I'm able to look at it, observe it, learn about stuff and then pull myself away from it. But There is a lot of like, you can't get wrapped up so much in the darkness because there's so much light. It's like knowing that it's there before I used to be like, oh, everything's fine, Pollyanna, blah, blah, blah. Now I can see that, but not not be of it, like be of the world, but not be in the world, but not of it. So yes, yes, yes. And and there's beautiful light workers like yourself that are here on this planet. Yes. Thank you to like, you know, lead everyone away from it. Because if you tune into the media at any time. I don't I haven't watched the news in years, but it's still, you can get it on your social channels. And some of that is just like, it's just, it's like, really, this world is upside down. But then, you know, then I follow yeah, all the puppies. I just take and it all as, wow, yeah. they're so scared of little old me. Yeah. They're going to all this trouble. They must be really weak, mm-hmm. you know, because if they could control us, they really would, you know, so they're just they're they're using mind control it's their biggest weapon and Mm -hmm. if you can stop drinking their poisons taking their alcohol taking the jibby jabs taking Mm -hmm. um coffee i'm i was a big coffee addict and i'm not into coffee anymore it's a very psycho uh psycho addictive Mm -hmm. uh drug it's uh, so, you know, when you see these poisons and, you know, cacao is amazing. I make this amazing cacao drink every day and there's there's no caffeine in it and lots of good, yummy things in it. Mm-hmm. So when you when you just stop, all you have to do is stop taking their poisons and you will naturally your clair senses are going to come up. Your cosmic conscious creations are going to come up and you're going to feel better mm-hmm. and you're going to be stronger and you won't. Um, you don't have to get bummed out about all that stuff. You mm-hmm. can just be like, wow, they're trying so hard. Mm-hmm. And I'm over here being happy and sharing and Absolutely. helping people. Absolutely. Absolutely. You see that stuff is like, <laughs> you try that. I ain't doing that, whatever. But it is it is true what you're saying about, yeah, get rid of all that stuff that's keep the gunk that's keeping you down and you just naturally open up to your divine nature because we are so powerful. It's like the Wizard of Oz, like- what is at the yeah. end? Like you've always, you've always had the power or you've always been able to go home, home to ourselves. There's no place like home. Yes. Yeah. There's no place like home. Yeah. That's beautiful. It's hard. The, the hardest part is losing people that you were, you know, on this journey with who are not ready. And, you know, you have to step out alone sometimes and fall flat on your own faith and it can be, it can be lonely, but then you just dig deeper in yourself. And, and, you know, I just find, wow, I'm so interesting now. I'm so, I'm so, I'm truly cool. Like really, really cool. Very, I have um, a lot to give and a lot to share in a bigger capacity, a bigger heart. And you have to let people go Mm -hmm. and not take it personally. It's not personal. It's literally just a vibrational Mm -hmm. difference. And that's what you're doing now, Nancy, is you are, you are becoming the vibration. So the perfect partner's coming in uh-huh. for you. Thank you. And he's working on himself as well, maybe. Exactly. 2024, exactly. let's do this. <laughs> know him, see him, yeah. be with him, cheer him on, mm-hmm. know it. Mm-hmm. That came to me in a dream last night when I, I went into the Akashic records, it was mm-hmm. kind of wild. I went into the Akashic records as I was dreaming. And I said, Oh, I'm here in my records. I need to ask a question. I never can figure out a question. I got to figure out a question. And so I was like, Oh, you know, how can I get my dream house in Savannah? Because I really mm-hmm. want a place there too. You know, I want the my owl. winter pad yeah. there too. And uh, the answer came, it came through uh Claire audience it came it was it was loud it was clear and it was one word and it was in a 
chorus. It was in a chorus of people. So ascended masters, teachers, past loved ones, all together said, no, K-N-O-W. Mm -hmm. And I said, oh, of course, I know this. Believe it, believe it, believe it. That's what they were saying to me. And it woke me up. No, mm -hmm. know it. Mm -hmm. That's all it is. We just, that's the power. Know it. See yourself, see yourself with the dream guys, see yourself in the dream house, you know, and whenever you find yourself going, when, why, how, <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. I'm the conscious cosmic creator. Mm -hmm. I have to know it. And then the universe is just so easy. You're just a match and all the, the uh, riches of the universe just pour onto you. It's, mm -hmm. it's a law. It's a law. Mm -hmm. I love that. Thank you for that. And it's funny that you said that, you know, just, I'm going to share this and I know we're over our time and then one or two questions we before are. we go. Yes. It went so quick. Unless you have a heart. I don't, do you have a heart out or you're good? No, no, I'm good. Oh, you're good. Okay. So it's funny. Last night I had such a dream. I've been sleeping so much. It's like winter comes. I went to California to visit friends and then I came back ever since I came back and I have not been able to get up. It's like winter. It's 10. I'm getting up at 10, nine o'clock. Today was nine o'clock. Sleeping so good. Delicious sleep. I love sleep. <gasps> but I had this in the middle of the night. I had this. It must have, I must have been lucid dreaming maybe. Because I was in my bed and something, I heard something and it scared me. Like someone was in that, I felt like someone was in the house and I was trying to get my body to move, but it wouldn't move. It was in this delicious sleep. So my body was in the sleep and I wanted to stay in the sleep, but yet I was trying to like move my body to get up. And then I had a dream, which was so interesting. I should write this down as well. And then I had a dream that I was getting married. <laughs> to an ex, which I don't need to get married, but I was getting married. I'm like, oh, you know, we are, that's why I've been a, alone this long is because he and I are supposed to get back together. And, and, you know, he asked me to marry him. I'm getting married. And then it's always like, we're like a wedding and it happened so quick and my dress doesn't fit. I didn't get to like fit the dress. And then my bridesmaids are gone and I can't find the room we're supposed to get married in. And then it's just this whole thing. Like, mm. I'm like, and then my cat's me on. I'm like, but I'm getting married. Don't wake me up. <laughs> My dream. And then there's always some exotic aspect. Like I always have this dream that I'm supposed to go to India. Like it's always India or it's Vietnam or it's someone far away. And I'm going on this journey by myself. So, and I'm always like, I'm like, okay, here, I'm going to India. I'm like, okay, I'm not catching the flight and I'm late for my flight or I don't actually get there. It's so bizarre. My friend's supposed to go and she cancels. I'm going on my own. I'm like, okay, yeah, I don't really want to go on my own. I'm a little scared to go on my own. It's so interesting that those were all intertwined. Okay, I have a thought about it. So this is a reoccurring dream, right? Mm -hmm. As we all have those anxiety dreams, I totally understand them. I'm like trying to get it together. My suitcase is still falling apart and I'm getting ready for the trip mm -hmm. or I'm at, I'm at school and I can't get my locker door shut with all the crap in it. <laughs> all right. So, okay, so here I am in that reoccurring dream. What are the clues, mm. folks, team? Try and look more closely for more, have more fun in it. Mm -hmm. Here I am again. I, I'm ready to release this dream. I'm ready just to be walking down the aisle, feeling really good. Where are the clues? Go, go deeper, go, go zoom in on clues and have fun with it. Mm, that's good. I'm going to go back and analyze that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Up and write, write them all down and then look for them in, in your waking life and, you know, take it out of that, that, um, that emotional anxiety, that anxiety. Mm -hmm. place. Yeah. Cause there's always More that fun. plane missing the plane. Oh, I missed the plane. Again. Oh, I actually made it on the plane. Like there's a couple of times, but, it, but waking up and writing it down, doesn't that just like, I, you know, my thing is going to be able to go back to sleep without the anxious mind going blah, 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 blah. So you're able to wake <sighs> up, write it down and go back to sleep. Yes, I do mm. because it's important. And I have faith that I'm Gonna, I mean, but I have, I have oils. I can run my Healy. Mm -hmm. You know, I have, <laughs> I have like all oh, yeah. science, all kinds of science projects all around me mm -hmm. to assist me. And yes, I am going to go back supported. to sleep. Mm -hmm. I am going to go back to sleep. I am back asleep. You know, just tell yourself a different story because there's so many mm -hmm. clues and hints and lovely juicy stuff there for you. 
-hmm. and writing it down is just a way of acknowledging it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm going to start that. I do have something next to my bed. Well, Ray, this has been such a wonderful conversation. Thank you so much for joining us. I would love for my listeners to find out how they can find you and start working with you. Or if you have any oh, cool no. projects, I know you have your book that just came out as well, but any other cool projects that you have upcoming as well? Well, if you want to keep this conversation going, you can DM me at I am Ray Leonard, I A M. R-A-E-L-E-O-N-A-R-D. That's my DM on Instagram for all of you who are on the treadmill and you got to stop and get a pen and write it down. <laughs> uh, you can also get in touch with me on my website, uh, which is rayleonard.me, R-A-E-L-E-O-N-A-R-D dot me, M-E. And I think, I think Nancy, I think Nancy and I are going to be working on a, um, a program really soon. So stay tuned. Oh, I think wonderful. Oh, I like that. I like your little into the intuition there. I'll take it. I'll take it. I'd love to work with you more. Um, so one more question before we go, I would love to hear from you what it means for you to live with an awakened heart. Hmm. It means slowing down. It means practicing an awakened heart, practicing the feeling. Like when you asked me that question, I got a little tingle mm. in my heart center, in my heart chakra. And now I'm interested in that growing and getting bigger. And I know that the more that I slow down in my life and look for clues, the more I awaken. Mm, beautiful. Beautiful. Thank you so much for that, sharing what it means to live with an awakened heart. And thank you for sharing everything that you did today on our podcast. This has been my pleasure. And I look forward to talking with you some more too. Me too. We'll have to definitely stay in touch. Thank you. Thank you, Nancy. Thank you for listening to this week's episode of the Awakened Heart Podcast. If you've enjoyed what you've heard today, share it with a friend. And if you haven't already, head on over to your favorite podcast app to subscribe, rate, and review. If you have any comments, questions, or feedback, you can reach me at the awakenheartpodcast.com. 